to the Meddling with Nature audio-only vlog. Each week, our little crew discusses the how-to and why-to of the naturalist arts, from taxidermy to wood grain, arachnophobia to apiculture. No stone is left unturned. This has some sensitive themes and sensual language. It's not a warning. It's our quality assurance. Welcome to Valley of Nature. I'm Jeremy Johnson. I suppose I'm Nate. Hmm. I suppose I'm Karina Young. I am probably Dan, the magician, Cushions. And I'm Mike Price. <laughs> How many vegetarians does it take to change a light bulb? Four. Two? None. Because no amount of vegetarians are ever going to change anything. Ooh. Oh. Boom. 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 Ah. Right in the penis. <laughs> so low. Why did you have to make Such a low blow. <laughs> Ouch. I'm going to be a dick tonight. Was that a fist bump in the penis? Yeah. <laughs> Man, we've talked about this. I learned that from my grandma who had like played we're that. We're well aware that we've talked you about that. No, you learned the dick The dick, <laughs> the dick stuff. Fist bump the penis. Mm-hmm. Thanks, grandma. Oh. The bus driver fist bumped me this morning. It was real weird. In the penis? He tried. No. Well, he likes to call me smiley He's face. so disappointed. I don't like him. That. Smiley face? Yeah, he calls me smiley face. And How you today, doing there, smiley face? That's exactly what I'm <laughs> You just, I just had a flash somehow I had no chin when you said that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's actually yeah. really close. And then this morning he said, come on, fist bump. And I was come like, on, not prepared. And I was like, uh, ugh. <laughs> it was real awkward. Oh, bus drivers, I love them all. We're talking about food today. Really? I don't know. You want context? Eating it. We just ate some. Pooping it. Mm. Some. We can talk about pooping it. I'm not the moderator. Who is? You are. Oh, shit. So, have you guys heard about synthetic meat yet? Uh, like soy? Synthetic or home, or like lab grown? Lab grown is yeah. actually how Ooh. I was going to start this. All right, please. I don't want to be the moderator, though. But I do. Have I a think. Topic why don't we all just share? We'll just co-moderate. Yeah. We'll, we'll why don't co-moderate. We, all just <laughs> we will. Share. We will work. Our, our ourselves through this. So is this a Como episode? Yes. So don't be a comophobe. <laughs> oh wait, wait. I have I have something to start with actually. Yeah. It's a quote. <clears throat> okay. Can I delegate my moderating responsibilities to Jeremy? Yes. No. We have to vote on that. No, it's done. I have autonomy. I'm gonna vote for that. I have patronage. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, quote. Okay. We shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat the breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. I love, I I, I just, I just really love Sylvia Plath. (laughs) I really do. Ever, you know, like, yeah. Who's that? Oh, she's, she's, she's brilliant. That's the quoted? Yeah. No, that's Winston Churchill. (laughs) Winston Churchill? That actually is Winston Churchill? Absolutely, yeah. What? Yeah. So well, I mean, is I, he still alive? No. Winston Churchill God damn it. I, I, I found it interesting that Winston Churchill felt that the only usable parts of a chicken was, were its breasts and its wings. Well, <laughs> only one of them is women. I, I also know another quote from <laughs> Winston. <laughs> another quote from Winston Churchill is: "Underneath this coat, I'm nude as a bee." <laughs> That's one too. It does kind of sound like my kind of guy. I know, I love him. Madam, I may be drunk, but you are ugly. In the morning, I will no longer be drunk, but you will still be ugly. Yes, <laughs> that one. That's one of my faves. Definitely. Ding a ding ding. <laughs> Man, I had no idea that. Oh, he's so great. Cool. He's one of the best personalities. Like he's like a Will Rogers. Was he is? He's, we he's, just learned this. He's dead. We just right? learned that he's dead. Breaking news: Winston Churchill is no longer with us. When he is meaningful, <clears throat> he is in presence. At any rate, so lab-grown meat. Well, yeah. What about lab-grown meat? Who did some uh, some looking at that? I've looked at it previously. Mm-hmm. I don't eat the meat. Yes, but that's because of the. Uh, element of pain that comes with harvesting it. So if okay. the original DNA for the meat product that's going to be grown in the lab can be harvested ethically, mm-hmm. so no pain there, and then there's actually no nerves or uh, nerve system to transmit the pain properly in the lab-grown meat, I see nothing ethically wrong with eating that as a vegetarian. Is it meat if it doesn't have nerves? 
Well, it's it's about the central nervous processing system. You know? Well, but I mean, wouldn't I mean like? Well, it could still have nerves, but I mean, if the pain's not going anywhere that's being registered, mm-hmm. then it's not actual pain. It's the same amount. Of so I read a lot about how they're they're making this meat. So I can tell you how they sure. Do so so basically, um, they they're gonna pull these certain kinds of cells, which I wrote them down so that I would not forget. Yeah. Um, stem cells. Embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells, or satellite cells. So mm-hmm. they pull those cells from the meat product or the well, probably the living animal. So that's where probably the embryo. Probably the embryo, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they use fetal bovine serum, which is the the issue that that um, vegetarians are going to have with it is that they're using this fetal bovine well, um, serum. And maybe to also grow that they're in. like playing God and having this weird perverse farm of meat that doesn't move. Wow, or we've feel. been doing that since winter winter wheat. Yeah, we've been. I mean, we've been playing God with our. Livestock and crops since we yeah. probably are right around when we've been guys. Yeah, but this so. this like this would take it to a new level for me. Will it really? Would, really, well, really? It's not cloning. It's growing. Well, it could be cloning. It's 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 basically taking a like basically what they're saying is is that you can take and this is a statistic that I found on the on the interweb, so we'll decide how true it is. Something in like um, from ten pork cells, you can get. Make sure I got my right. I was really, I'm, I'm really anxious. Come on, fifty thousand tons of meat. <laughs> that can't be right. It can be actually, because I mean, yeah. if they're coming from the original, like yeah. pluripotent state, you can get them to differentiate out to whatever cells you need them to. Yeah. And and so basically, they put it in this serum. They grow it, and it, and it literally the. I mean, and it's it's growing. They're growing meat. Yeah, and, and when the you cells think of it, just need to reproduce, and that's really all it is, and so it doesn't. Isn't have to there be any animal. aging process? Aging. Yeah, because isn't isn't that like the thing with aging is your cells can only multiply so many times. Um, yeah, but if you continually keep splitting them from the original ones, well, then it's going to go through the same number of generations, but you can grow them well, separately. How do you keep splitting the original ones so that you can have? No, mm-hmm. how how do you how do you do it? Uh, I well, I guess the lab, original ones are what? stem cells, and so stem cells. Are, I don't know enough about. Cells and whatnot. Jeremy might be able to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, but they're using stem cells and satellite cells, and that's. It seems like that's the basically. If you take a human embryo, (laughs) or really any animal embryo, so we don't have to go all super ethical on this, but um, and you go ahead and suck out the stem cells and then put them all in individual egg capsules. Mm -hmm. So we're talking mammals here, but um, give them each their own. You're likely to be able to grow a identical organism from each one of those mm-hmm. cells. So at that point, um, let's say you waited until it divided to eight, you popped them out, you threw them into eight separate egg sacs, and then let them grow, you'd end up with eight cows instead of your original one that you were going to get. So if you sort of keep doing that down the line... Hmm. Right, right, well, I was just talking about yeah. this is a more traditional... Yeah, beef straps. Yeah. <laughs> traditional. Beef straps is well, exactly I mean, what you get, is, is a yeah. strap. Yeah. Because they, they, they make it grow between two... Like, they... Right, right. <laughs> like, and I mean, it's 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 it, it is um, really when you think about it, it's like, oh my god, that's so horrific. It's like, well, you know, we're kind of growing grapevines that way. I'm gonna be or, really or, honest. When I first like, because I basically what made me start paying attention to this was that this morning I was like, we're gonna be talking about meat and stuff tonight, mm-hmm. and so I was like, I'm gonna be on the bus for like a solid hour today. And I was like, I'm just gonna like search my pod kicker for like meat <laughs> and see what comes up. Search my pod kicker for meat. I, I love it. Welcome to the <laughs> meat talk show. Well, I found meat two talk. separate podcasts about synthetic meat, and yeah. I was like, "That's gross." Let's see what happens. And so I listened to both of them. One of them was um, a BBC, I think, Discover, and then the other uh-huh, one was uh-huh. the Stuff You Should Know. Yeah, and. At the end of it, I was kind of like, I'd do it. I'd eat, I'd eat fake meat. Like, I can get, I can get behind this, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I does mean, it taste like normal meat? Okay, so that was the thing, is that... Is it, there blood At this it? point, no. No, okay. there's no blood in it. Yeah, and there's, so, no there's, part, there's no blood. circulation, though. There's, there has to be blood. How could there be blood? There's, there's no blood. No... How could you... How could you provide oxygen to the cells if you don't have it's, circulation? Dude, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's no. If you have it, no if you have it small enough segments that it's sort of like you have a substrate that injects into it. Wait, so it's like a sponge now? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's what so muscles are. sponge me. I don't want to say yes to you. 
Um, <laughs> it sounds gross. Well, of course, it's going to sound it's, gross, it's, but I mean, it's you don't want to know what's in the chili. <laughs> Never ask what's in the chili. But the thing it's is... the chili. <laughs> That's the rule the of thumb. Chili. The rule of thumb is never ask what's in the chili. But like, you, that's why nobody wants to go to a slaughterhouse. Because they don't want they don't want that. I ask what's in the chili. Yeah, yeah let's not talk know. about the sausage. Mm-hmm. So so the thing with it is is that, you know, obviously at this point we're not anywhere near being able to use this as a viable like meat source. Mm-hmm. Like it's not something that's gonna be cheap enough because it's really expensive and it's like hold on, I've got I've got a number, hold on. In two thousand and eight it cost one million dollars for point five five pounds of beef. Point five, five. half a pound. <coughs> a little over half a pound. Yeah. A million this, dollars. Well, yeah, but this to, is all to create this in a lab. This is in a lab, so you're and doing so, the, so they're they're developing the technology now, and so there's two lead researchers. Wait, so who got to eat it? So Three. they've done some taste tests. <laughs> <laughs> they they had um like a big like conference I guess in 2013 where they like had a celebrity chef cook some of it and they you know did some taste testing on it. Um, word on the street is that it doesn't taste that great right now, and part of the reason is because they're literally trying to figure out how to find a way to make meat cheap enough that we can actually find a way to distribute it and like actually use it and they haven't really gotten to the point of making it taste good by injecting or finding a way to include fat in it because the thing about meat is that the delicious parts of it are the fat parts Mm -hmm. so that you need the fat parts you need to have blood you know these are the things that make meat taste good and so they just haven't quite gotten to the point where like they know what they need to do Mm -hmm. and apparently according to all the researchers and the scientists, all they think that they think, yeah, all of them, every all one of them, them. all well, they, of them. They have to answer unanimously. Right, or it's not science. <laughs> yeah, otherwise there's it's not science. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> and so they had a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all researchers. And they unanimously came to the agreement that making this meat taste good is not going to be a problem. They just have to figure out how to do it cheap enough that they can make it something that's. I want to go to that conference. I really do, like, like without any culinary specialists or anything else, just scientists. Culinary? Culinary. Culinary? culinary. culinary. Jesus culinary. Christ. Culinary. culinary. Do you not culinary. know this word? You said culinary. Yeah. Culinary. Well, it's culinary. just the way he talks. Culinary. It's the way I talk, too. You really What's need to stop this culinary? podcast for me saying culinary and you not agreeing with it? Go back to making mouth noises. <laughs> <laughs> Take your fucking two strawberries and embarrass yourself. <laughs> well, I don't even remember what the joke was anymore. So they wanted he, to go to... Yeah, without any culinary problems. specialists or anything else like that. Just a bunch of scientists saying, well, let's, let's discuss what... The, the flavor of meat r- really is. Well, that's, I mean, and that was one of the things was that they, they had to <laughs> do, when they did these taste tests, they, they, they sat down and they had people taste meat that was grown on farms right. and, <clears throat> and describe the flavors that they were coming back with and come up with descriptive words for meat so that when they had people taste test the, synth- the synthetic meat, they could say, you know, does it taste like this? You know, is it gamey? Is it does it taste grassy? You know, hmm. does it does it taste? I don't know. I can't think of any other. Description. Gamey, like, but this yeah. is the the thing I was looking at today because I knew we were going to be talking about this too. Is like one of my problems has been is that, that people really have a limited uh, a limited vocabulary. For meat. For meat. And, and, and that's uh, what they were saying in these podcasts. Okay. Because, well, cause, you know, like, I know uh, a lot of the, the people around this table are, are artists. Mm-hmm. And, and so we, uh, we have a lot of different names for a lot of different colors, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so I was looking pretty, pretty heavily for different adjectives, different descriptors for different types of meat, diff- you know, poultry versus fish versus uh, uh, game meats, you know, cow, sheep. There's really not that much that I could find that was really readily available outside of some very obscure things that were um, uh, really pretty uh, unmeaningful. Yeah. Um, gamey, for instance, of course, is just anything that... <clears throat> Weren't we talking of, like, we were trying to describe to Mike what gamey meant? Right. Like, and for the most part, the internet says... That it's any meat that is 
seemingly game-like or wild, but also slightly spoiled. See, I've, I I always heard it as being something that was like overly bloody and chewy, mm -hmm. but that's all I'd ever heard, so I was like, oh, gamey, and I just associated that would be deer or rabbit or something. Right. And then I had the rabbit that you, or not right. rabbit, it was deer. Well, it, I had deer that you cooked. You had rabbit cooked. too, I think. I don't know if I made you rabbit or not. But. Well, the the one time I'm thinking about is when you made your deer, mm -hmm. and it was a deer that you and I butchered together. Yeah. And it was, you know, a month later or something, and you were like, oh, you want some of that deer, and you made it for me. And that was the best fucking steak I've ever had, so I was like, oh, gamey means delicious. Yeah. So from that moment on, I was like, <laughs> all right, that's what gamey means. Awesome. Doesn't this sound like it's going down the wrong track, though? I mean, like, this is the problem with vegetarian bacon, is that it's trying to be bacon. It's bacon. Yeah, it's well, and that's, I mean, and that's the it's thing. Though, but, that, well, but that, well, because meat meat is delicious. Meat tastes exactly like what you want it to taste like. Exactly. But, but, but most people want those types of flavors available to them, even if they're not going to eat meat. But I think then we should say we don't want it to taste like meat. We want it to taste good. Well, oh, I think it, it's it's. But but when you're talking about the imitation thing, I think that's exactly it. Is that's that's the point I'm making? Is that deer. Mm -hmm does not taste like beef. Beef does not taste like pork, which does not like, taste mm -hmm. like chicken. And and then, when you're even looking at a cow, different parts of cow taste... I mean, obviously, anybody that... that there is that, no meat taste. I had always thought... There is no meat taste. I always Liver thought that gamey was intended to refer to small game. And especially uh -huh. because it was wild, it's, it's much leaner. Right. And so, like, as such, it has less fat, and that's what my understanding of something that tastes gamey was. Yeah, but again, like, like, uh, when you're, when you're tasting the difference between, like, fricassee, you know, like a rabbit versus a fox versus a, a, a bobcat versus, um, you know, like any other type of, well, a boar or bear, mm -hmm. these are, are meats that are so completely, uh, dissimilar. Mm hmm. That it, it really is just saying like beef, then everything else right, yeah. is is really what it what it's which, more of a catch all. So yeah. would you would you say that like meat is is similar to vegetables in that same sense though? Yes, like, you know, mm -hmm. like broccoli is not a carrot, is not like, absolutely. An artichoke. And I think that that, that that we in the kind of the United States have a you know, some difficulty differentiating because yeah. we have a limited palate. Yeah, we're we're growing in that. I think. Mm -hmm. I think that it's becoming much more popular to to try weird things. I mean, like like what we did Is it over the artisans? yeah the, yeah yeah and 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 reality TV shows and things like that too. Um, and like, and I think also when you're talking about like people getting more comfortable with other ethnicities, absolutely. You know, yeah. Like it, it's it's okay to eat goat now. It's okay to eat right. You know, lamb. And I mean, my dad, my dad always you know like because when I was saying like yeah, I really kind of like goat. It's like I will never touch a goat. Yeah. And I never really understood what that was about. Yeah. And like apparently it was because that's what they ate all the time on the farm. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. constantly eating right. goat. I thought it was like, well, I, you know, like I guess he doesn't like Mediterranean people or something. <laughs> but it, was, it wasn't that at all. But but it's it's a it's a peculiar age, I, I think he was too. Racist for years. Yeah, I thought he was racist for years. But I think it's a peculiar age as well. Is that uh, that we're we're conflicted in some ways with food. I think that also there's there's this this two sided end of it. Um, we were talking earlier about the people who only eat white foods, and then there's those of us who see food as an adventure. Yeah, you know, like you know, you were talking about the adventure yeah. food people. I fucking just put and a heart valve in my mouth. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, that, that did happen. Came right back out, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had fucking adventure, did, didn't I? Listeners, do the not mitral valve, valve was in his teeth. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Unless you like eating shoes. Yeah, you, in which case, dig in. You literally cannot swallow it. Can you, you can. You can't. You get. Yeah, I didn't see you try. I will make you. You could swallow it. You just couldn't digest it. <laughs> I want to I mean, poop you out of You tried to swallow it and see what happened. <laughs> Pooping out a valve. And then you're. Well, let's not digress. All right. So, um. <laughs> because that was Dan's joke, I'm not going to tell it. Because it was gross. Um. So, so you have these two different types of people, and the, there's the the white meat or the white food eaters, the mm -hmm. ones who are only going to be eating chicken and potatoes and bread. You know, they're at one end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. No, they exist. They're real. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. And then there's then there's the Wonder rest of us. Yeah. No, this only is real. This is like they are fucking real people, 
And I can guarantee you that some of them will listen to this podcast and they'll be like, that's me. Yeah. Sorry, but I'm not going to eat your vegetables. Suck it. And then there's those of us what who are... What about cauliflower? Like, oh, carry on. Come on. <laughs> so then there's I'll the rest on. of us who... Oh, yeah, carry on. Who they, they, they see an opportunity to eat something... And, you know, like, I, for example, like, I was like, bugs, uh, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been so many things that I've been like, uh, I don't know if I should, like, and then I'm like, well, this is probably delicious, I'm going to get to eat this, so I'm going to go for it. Yeah. And then I put it in my mouth, and then if I don't like it, I don't like it. If I do, I do. Yeah. And, you know, like, I think that that's, like, a big thing with, with the other types of meats, the expanding of the American palate. No, I think that, that would, that too, like, like, the insect thing, because I think a lot of people are, are starting to talk about... You know, food shortages and things like that. It's like, well... There, there is a word for eating Where is there a food shortage? And I oh, you myopic, crazy called, son of a bitch. Where? where? Eto <laughs> lots and lots and lots Holy of shit! <laughs> this is why GMO is, is, is an important progress for this entire... Right, Norman Burlaw's uh, Green Revolution. Yes, Revolution. yes. Yeah, well, yeah, in the past, where is there a food shortage now? Um. Oh, shit. Have you heard of India? Africa, the rest of the fucking on? world, anywhere it, that's hot over there. What's good? What do they got going on? <laughs> we, we, How about Haiti? <laughs> oh, shit! Like, can we just start naming them all off? You know, or the one out of eight Vast starving parts Americans, of Mexico. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's not necessarily a North Korea. It's not always. Well, a North shortage. Korea is a great place, <laughs> right? So, yeah. Well, those are, are all fake grocery stores, Nate. Are they low on food? Yes. <laughs> all right, Candide. Kendall? Kendall? Uh, all right. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> it's out of the purview of this podcast. I don't even French know Revolution? what to do right no, now. No, no. Voltaire? Candide? Voltaire's Can from the French Revolution. Uh, all right, well, um... So, anyway. I... Before that previous derailment, what were, okay, I was talking I about... Even, I can't okay, even do that. No, food like, food shortages <laughs> and the possibility of eating insects. Okay. All right, right. Listen, right. I, I've got a question, and it's, and it's in that vein. What would be the point of growing artificial meat? Well, okay. Here's a great thing. Outer space. Is that So we can force people like Dan to eat it. That too. The, well, that is a, a thing <laughs> is that um, in 2008, PETA, which I think that this was... Some, some bullshit on Peta's part. Well, they, most, they, most of it. Is, yeah. They they offered a one million dollar reward to any company that was able to produce artificial. Uh, I think it was was it chicken? Yeah, I wrote this down. Chicken mm -hmm. um, by two thousand and twelve. So in two thousand eight, they said if by two thousand and twelve your company can make <clears throat> a viable option for artif like um, lab grown mm -hmm. chicken meat. Or give you a million dollars. That's really not very much. It just can't and that be. was my thing. I was like, that <laughs> would be like, it would be like, we will pay for we'll your paper clip supply. We'll give you a high five if you can do it. Right. Like, we'll, like, we'll, pay for, we'll pay for your paper clip supply. Yeah. But and everybody <laughs> who's listening thinks that a million is a lot. It's, no, I but mean, it's that's not. Well, everyone well, who's know, listening is not when you're talking about artificial chicken. In 2008, chicken. Yeah, but it's a ploy. it cost a million dollars to buy a half of a pound of beef that was synthetically made. So... A million dollars was some bullshit, but whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's nicer than to try. But reasons reasons to actually make synthetically grown mm -hmm. actual meats. Um, there are multiple of them, but uh, the CO two emissions from factory farms mm -hmm. is significantly greater than all of the transport in the United States. So all mm -hmm. of the cars, mm -hmm. all of the trucks. Eighteen tr percent cattle farming is eighteen percent of. Um, greenhouse gas. Yeah, mm -hmm. but how would how would artificial meat improve on that? Well, you you could do it in a factory farm, at which point you could filter everything mm -hmm. out uh, and process it. I don't know the facts, but I would be willing to bet that it is way, way, way more oil inefficient energy to to deal with vegetables. No way. Oh, what does wait, it take to grow up? What does it take to to raise a cow and then kill it versus an entire crop you, of vegetables. Okay, what about the entire you crop of vegetables that, that goes feed to the cow? To the cow. Yeah, you you grass? Be, yes. 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 Grass-fed yeah. cow. Corn. No, corn. Corn-fed beef. Corn. I'm not talking about corn-fed beef. It doesn't matter. What I'm talking about grass-fed beef. Look, look well, this is a the kind of beef that we should be corn-fed beef. That's fucking weird. Do you know how many cows it takes to feed people? Right. But more to the point, 
Every time you step one step away from the sun as a source of food, you typically lose, you lose, or rather you re- retain 10% of the energy. Mm-hmm. So you grow the grass, you're using about 10% of the sunlight that came in. Then you feed that to the animal, mm-hmm. and it's only going to retain about 10%, which means yeah. that you need a hundred, or, you know, about a hundred times as much to get that animal to grow up. And to get that same amount of calories, yes, so it's it's, it's it's like a hundred yeah. to one ra- or sorry, ten to one ratio. Yeah, right. This but you're telling me all of the machines today, yeah. that it takes to the harvest all of those machines, crops. Those same machines. Those same machines, right? machines are used to feed the animal. You have yeah. to harvest to the grow grass. grass. Yeah, to feed. Yeah. Them. You don't just grow. No, you don't, absolutely. They're not, not free range. Most of the animals you're eating are not free range. I'm not the, talking the about food most of the is animals. To them. I'm not talking about most of the animals that people are eating. Well, I'm then what about are you talking about? Grass fed cows versus. If we wanted to grass feed all of the cows, we would need Antarctica to be a, a, a completely. Not if people know. were eating meat in moderation. Well, they're if, not. If but that's could, a different. That's scenario. why we're growing it. In, <laughs> yeah. That's why we're growing it in vats. Right, they're not but, gonna do right, that. right, right. But you're also we're also if talking. No, no, no. But if everybody were just really nice, we wouldn't have war. But the issue here is talking about when we're talking about vegetarians is eating not eating meat or eating less meat. Now you're talking about a different situation where you're like, we should all not eat meat, right? We should do the vegetarian thing. I'm talking about the same situation where we're eating meat in moderation as opposed to not eating meat. If you're saying that eating meat yeah. no, is, and, is, and is that is, bad, I'm saying what about eating meat in moderation, mm-hmm. moderating the kind of grass? No, this I'm is, saying this is exactly no what Dan's saying. This is exactly what he's saying. We need to eat closer to the sun. But there's no way, because if, think about this right now. If you're talking about less people eating meat and more people eating veggies, mm-hmm. think about how much land it's going to take if there are zero meat eaters. You think it's a problem to have X amount of grass to raise beef. Okay. Okay. How you're, much you're, land is it going to take right. to hang, grow hang crops on, hang for on. Just, people just with or, no meat? Organizationally, either. can you explain traffic levels? Traffic levels? Trophic levels. Trophic levels. Oh, um, Distance no. From okay. the sun. Go ahead. Distance from the sun, just like do an overview. Okay, so the, the brief concept is every step away you get in your consumption from the sun, mm-hmm. you're typically going to retain 10% of the calories that went into that. Because 90% of that energy is going to get expended mm-hmm. on life. Right. Okay. Okay. Anytime any animal ever, whether it be uh, grain-fed or grass-fed, is raised to be consumed by humans, you have wasted a huge amount of calories. So you could have had an acre Cal- of grain... Calories and, is energy. Right. Calories is energy. You could have had, like, 10 acres of grain. Now you have... A cow that is clearly not ten acres. <laughs> now, now the counterpoint to this is is that ten acres of grain tastes like shit next to the mashed potatoes, you asshole. But the point still is that the cow is smaller and less calories than the amount of calories that went into it to make it into meat. So, anytime you're eating meat, you are guaranteed to be eating more or expending more calories than the amount of food that you could have if had available to a bunch of people if you'd left it in the grain. Substrate. Because, well, especially because the cow is living, the cow is warm, the cow is exuding energy that right. we like crazy. can't get because. But also, the cow is doing a lot of work there. No, it's just standing around and yeah. eating we and need living to make and them growing. Do work, then that's right. They need to be like. Not to mention, yeah. <laughs> not to mention, there are a yes. lot, a lot, a lot of things that exist in our world that are dependent on animal byproducts. Um, this is a different argument. Yeah. No, this is the same be. argument because that is the but, meat that we're eating. Is, Those animals still have to die to have these things that exist in here's our world. Here's the thing, though, is that there are alternatives to that. Hemp is one of them. That's right. You can build an entire cow out of hemp, and it's exactly <laughs> as good as a real cow. And you can pet it, and it's a little bristly. Uh, I would like to know the statistics of the amount of land that it would take in addition to what we already mm-hmm. have, right? So animal and and crop. Okay. In well, addition, what, what, if, if everybody stopped eating experiment. meat, if everyone stopped eating meat, we wouldn't be using those calories worth of grains or grass to feed those animals. Therefore, we yeah. would have an exponentially larger amount of food available in grain form. Well, here's yeah. one of the wonderful. We would do much better without meat. We'd have yeah. Well, I mean, or well, with, we with don't less. need to conform our our uh, meat addiction to our control addiction. I mean, when we're looking at... Uh, totally um, different. Huh? Totally different. Oh, well, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I really like to think about, uh, 
you know, Nate has worked a little bit on roadkill statistics. I suppose so. I suppose so. You got your blood map coming up. Okay. We're going to show some pictures of that. But uh, yeah. when we're looking at even just like where we live at, Cincinnati, Hamilton County, um, the amount of, of deer that are hit by cars or that are culled by, uh, by different authorities, um, it is enough to feed the city mm-hmm. without cows. Right. And that's just the deer that... Well... Well... I don't know about there's that. There's a lot of deer out there, man. There's like, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Deers are big. And how often does, do, does the average person hit a deer? The average person, or how many deer get hit? Well, I don't know. How many, how many... How often does the average person well, hit a deer? Well, that's also why I mentioned call. Yeah, the callings are... are you're gonna, you get a lot of yeah. meat like that. Because you, you're just... Yeah, but we're not really using them. It's not enough to population. feed the city. Okay, well, it's not then. Uh, but, a but a lot city. of statistics are saying that it is. And, uh, and I, I, yeah, I'm interested. Really plausible. Okay, but well, then, then let's like, skip this saying, entire I'm not saying point. it's not a big, big potential source of food, but it's not enough to feed the city. What would that even, like, we'd okay. only eat deer? We could supplement it, though. Yeah. That's not feeding the city. Well, it is technically feeding the city just in smaller amounts than we were talking about. Okay, well, I've fed the city tonight by, like, offering up my dinner table and some mm-hmm. potatoes. But if we do want to be able to have steak available at, or hamburger available at every meal, we do have to do the kind of factory farming that we're going to do. To, yeah, we do, but, but yeah. at the same time, like when we are looking at the wildlife that's around us that we don't see as being viable, right? Uh, that's that's where we're making some mistakes. Anyway, so I was, I was still interested in the old beef curtain scenario. <laughs> um, <laughs> Where we're growing the meat on sheep, which we were talking about before the podcast. Right. No, well, I, I I agree with that. I think that it's. I it's want to go to space. Though, yeah. I want to go to space, and to go into space, we totally. need to not have stampeding farty cows. We need hanging <laughs> gardens and walls of beef. And, and well, walls and of we beef need and poultry protein. plants. We need, need nutrition, nutrition and protein. protein. What we're what the, I think that that's that's where where some of this goes to is as well is is that um, do we need fake meat? Do we need Produced non-zoological well, meat. We, well, we don't need it. Or do to we survive. need protein? Certainly, what do we want? Proteins. According to Modern Meadows, mm-hmm. which is the name of one of the companies that's producing the okay. synthetic meat. Modern I thought you were going to say Modern Medicine, and then you like took a quick yeah. Modern version. Meadows. <laughs> okay. Modern Meadows, which I think is really funny. Mm-hmm. Just let me think for a second. <laughs> well, that's been getting very We're going to amplify All that. Right. <clears throat> According to, yeah. to Modern yeah. Meadows, then yes, that is what we need. Why? Well, they would say that, though. That is what their company does. That's what their company does. Because, I mean, just like Dan's saying, like, you know, you're talking about people, astronauts, you know, they need to have protein. Mm-hmm. And this would be a great <clears throat> use for astronauts. Not to mention... This would also be a great way... To produce, if if they can find a, a way that they can produce it in in um, economic way, right? Then this is gonna it, it's gonna be an alternative, right? To something that's expensive, okay? Something that's very environmentally bad for for the earth, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, because contrary to what you might think, Mike, it really is very like I'm still not convinced. But now, I, I I also with that. So, when we're looking at something that is recognizable to ourselves, you know, doe eyes of a cow. Um, if we can not, you know, if we can not slaughter this cow and create something in a laboratory, then bully for us. But if we do the same thing for corn or for wheat or for barley then all of a sudden it becomes something nefarious and yeah. Frankenstein like sort of and that depends on and it and I know who you know the people that you're sort of referring to the people that are completely anti yeah, GMO, GMO like yeah but i mean the thing is that it depends on how what kind of genetic modification you're referring to right. because even coaxing a strain into a different variant mm-hmm. is a form of genetic modification but uh-huh. it's it's yeah. not it's not actually going in and changing the genes yourself Right. But rather sort of letting the plant dick around and saying, oh, that's the least crappy one, we're going to keep going with that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's still working within yeah. the frameworks of that uh, species genetic code without modifying it on your own. Mm-hmm. It's just modifying it by selective breeding. Are, are you saying that ancient agriculture, like agriculture from years and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, is essentially genetic? Absolutely. If you look at the, mm-hmm. the, um, the proto-maze 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's what eventually got. Oh um, yeah, the shaped thing that it was just kind of this. It's just, just a, it's just a, it's, <laughs> it's just a strand. Like it's got like it's got like ten little. little it's like, I look like little, wheat. Right. It looks yeah. like wheat. Like it looks like wheat that's a little obese. Yeah. And it doesn't look particularly appealing, but then it gets trained over the years. It, it, it literally does just look like a grain of wheat. Mm-hmm. And then over you know <clears throat> multiple generations of selected breeding, mm-hmm. um, we end up with a big old thing of corn that's got all kinds of. Tasty yeah, and it is. Comp- yeah, and that, I think that's like genetically modified. You, you get this idea of, of like a 1950s uh, magazine article about some crazy person with uh, yeah, and and that's just simply not what it is. Right. Well, it is now saying. though. It is changing, and I, I'm no. not necessarily afraid of genetic modification, but I see why people look to direct manipulation of genetic uh, genetic code as being different from what's happened previously. Right. They're similar, but they're they're using different mechanisms. Yeah, but we're very afraid of that. Right. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people that are very afraid of, of kind of just our, our, our Frankenstein sort of uh, sensibility for creating new meats. Because, like, when we think about Kentucky Fried Chicken, for instance, like the, the, the recent sort of ideas or scandals, not even scandals, or McDonald's even, of, of they're just... These things, they don't have beaks, they don't have legs, they don't have yeah. feathers or wings. Well, they They're actually just... do de-beak the birds. Well, I, I'm just saying, but like... they had beaks at one point. The, the idea of, of these, these laboratories that are growing birds without feathers, without emotions, without thought, you know... Well, and I then... think the fear is that they do have emotions and thought. No, to me, I, I think that meat is only delicious if it if it knows remorse. If it knows it's meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that we're we're oftentimes riding the fence, um, and and we're unsure of of <laughs> what we want to believe in ourselves when it comes to to food products, especially when it comes to meat. I'm just um, saying, grapevines, but instead of the grapes, it's chicken nuggets. Like we nobody hate, could complain. Well, we we hate to see. Shaped. We hate yes, yeah, star shaped. <laughs> obviously, we and hate by to the see. Way, those exist. I know. I found yeah. them. Carl's Jr. has them. Oh my god! On a vine. That's where they come from. When we see chickens in deplorable conditions, more expensive when you buy them on the store. Um, yeah, like like it, 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 obviously all the and when Peter comes in there, no, there's nothing. Um, it is very disturbing to see those images of of slaughterhouses that are poorly run mm-hmm. um, but at the same time like it's it, when we're seeing things uh, such as growing meat in laboratories a lot of people think of the same sort of <coughs> the same sort of uh, uh, hesitance right um, and it's like what it. what exactly do do humans need what exactly do humans want when it comes to protein when it comes to food sources is it I think GMOs? Have very Is it low natural? standards when it comes to, to meat sources. Mm-hmm. They just don't realize it. I think the the real question is that what what are people interested in getting into a uh, moral panic about? Yeah. Like, and yeah. really, it's anything as long as you can get some marketing behind it. Yeah. So right. you've got PETA Absolutely. and you got them freaking people out. You got anti GMO and they're freaking people out. If you can get people to freak out, then you butts. can get somebody to right beaver beaver tank. <laughs> oh, the beaver castoreum vanilla the uh, vanilla yeah which is apparently not that widespread despite my. Adam, yeah. <laughs> it is still used in some things, but we couldn't really figure out what. Well, here's, yeah, here's well, you know, it was a good conversation. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, beaver taints and other similar things. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, so if you can get people into, a, it, well, just the fact that it's weird, it's weird to grow meat in a lab, and so automatically you're going to be like, mm-hmm. right, so it's well. going to be the more adventurous eaters who are like, uh, yeah, I'll give that a whirl. So really, anything grown in a lab is going to cause suspicion, whether it be corn. Or cows. Right. But here's the thing, though, is that you say that the more adventurous eaters, the more adventurous eaters. Who do you think was the person who was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna take some milk out of that cow's tit and drink it, and see what happens." <laughs> like it's the more adventurous eaters who say, "I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna put that in my mouth and find out what happens." Like they're the ones who make it so that the rest of us are doing crazy shit. To be fair, and, yeah. like, they're also the ones that die a lot more. That's wow. okay. I mean, that's fine with Well, me. you know, we did our last workshop on Sunday at the Art Academy of Cincinnati for medical illustrators, and it w- involved a lot of bug stuff. And so, you know, as part of that spread, we, we had a lot of uh, insect hors d'oeuvres. And what happened, Mike? Fucking ate them. Yeah. We, uh, so many people ate them. Yeah. Yeah. A shocking amount of people... <laughs> 
threw that bug into their mouth at 100 miles an hour. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. I was walking around with a plate. I was nervous. I was like shaking. Like, does anybody want a sour cream and onion cricket? And people were just like, go, oh, oh, yeah. put that in my mouth right now. Like, yeah. before I, because I thought we were all going to do it together. Like, everybody get your bug. I'm like, we're going to do we it together. We talked about it. Yeah, we were Me nervous. and Mike like got in the corner and we're like, we're going to get everybody to take a bug and then we're going to stand in front of the room and everybody's going to pop a bug in their mouth yeah. and we're all going to be like, ah! And I tried to be such a badass because I had this one yeah. giant beetle, and I like mowed down on that. And it's like everybody was like, "Well, shit, we yeah. already ate a package of that." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, two or three people are just shoveling them yeah. in, like you got a different flavor. Like, just... see, maybe that's the issue though, is that it was the you know the nacho cheese and ranch flavors. Well, and if bacon, you had, bacon if you had... flavor too. Well, and, right. and the flavors weren't even that strong. So that's my no, they weren't. They weren't. I put that not cricket not in my mouth, and I was like, "I'm eating a fucking yeah. bug." Like, like mm-hmm. he's there. He's, I don't know if he knew he was looking at me. He was just he got like the thousand yard stare, and he just like, yeah. And luckily, he had just finished like handing bugs, and he went straight and got some water. Yeah, and I, I had a goddamn bug in my mouth. I don't know what these other people were doing. They were just like, yeah, it's like Doritos. No. Mm. That was a you know, fucking. But insect. what if you had extreme nacho cheese wall meat? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that would be more palatable to me. The thing is, too, is like but that, 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 that's what I think is kind of interesting about this generation, this time, is that that is a much more popular thing right now. Which is why we didn't have trouble getting rid of everything that we had. Because like when I went to Jungle Gems to actually get that stuff, I mean, you, you know, like which I was actually surprised. I walk in, you know, okay, candy aisle or d'oeuvre aisle. And then there's this giant display. It's like, famous insect hors d'oeuvre, you know, like stuff. Yeah. Like, and there's like everything there. It's like there. a bug it's like, kiosk. It's a bug yeah, kiosk. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I've yeah. It. My, my yeah. favorite interaction yeah. about those bugs was this guy goes, are these FDA approved? And I was like, sure, I'm, I'm sure they are. Like, there's no way that they can sell them here without them being FDA approved. Yeah. FDA has, they have, the FDA has their fingers label, all over yeah. everything. And the guy takes the package from me, looks at it, and he goes, well... They were produced in California, and then he just starts putting them in his mouth, and I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, I love it, the fact that, like, the fact that it was made in America makes right. you, like, just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm mad those days. I eat yeah. these fucking bugs. Oh, Fresno? Oh, sure. <laughs> But I think that it also, you know, like, we are starting as a culture to be conditioned yeah. towards um, not only adventure eating, mm-hmm. but alternative eating um, for, for for different protein sources that are not... Like, you try that in in the uh, 60s and 70s? No. My mom and dad, I guarantee you, never would that enter anywhere close to their lips. Yeah. Just look at the availability well, of food stuff. my mom and dad, maybe, but... Just generally speaking, what, there's a much greater variety of foodstuffs available in any common grocery store than there were mm-hmm. decade after yeah. decade. Like, it, it's been almost exponential. So, I would imagine that protein sources would be a bit more in that category as well. Is that true in rural areas? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, well, I don't know how far rural I've gone, but I can, <clears> I can <throat> find my sriracha hot sauce pretty much anywhere. Yep. Sriracha's everywhere. I mean, I am pretty rural where I grew up, and I was just there recently, and yeah, I think within 50 miles I could find some silkworm moths, chocolate covered. Yeah, because every place has a, a specialty retailer that caters to... People are <laughs> interested in that that kind of newness or... Yeah. or um, yeah, because, and I think that it has to do with the internet being available. You know, yeah. people are seeing programs where, like, Anthony Bourdain is going to places. And, and also just, like, know. like with, with what we're thinking about with rural areas, too, like with deer sausage and stuff like that, these are things that, <coughs> they're not new. Yeah, yeah actually, they're very, the more adventurous old. eating has been out in the country. Yeah. Like, right, I mean, I mean this is... This is right. Mountain yeah. oysters and all that. Right. You know, yeah, 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 like Ragu, and, and um, it's the same sort of thing with, with, like, living in Kansas and stuff like that, like... Um, coming to Cincinnati, it, it's it's a little bit more weird because it's so, I guess I would say white bread. Yeah, white compared food. to yeah, white food. I mean, like yeah. no, you you go and you you, it's it's eating pheasant is not weird. It's not an yeah. odd thing, but it's like you spend top dollar to get that here mm-hmm. or duck fat fries. I mean, yeah. it's like well, that's not that big of a deal in Kansas. Yeah, because that's just stuff that you have available. And that goes into the, the, the concept of 
the term gamey again. Mm -hmm. Gamey meaning anything, because that, that, that can apply to ducks, that can apply to lambs, that can apply to, to every single thing that is so not a cow or a pig. Default other to gamey. Default other, yeah. And, and I think that um, I, I really do hope that like, with food, at least for non-vegetarians, that we, we start to, to develop a bit better of a vocabulary for that. Let's take a break. Hooray! I'm gonna start rubbing dirt on my toe for this. This week's shout out goes to Amy Bogart. As you know, we conducted a few workshops this past week, and Amy was a participant at our AMI Art Academy workshop. And while we love to tell you how it all went, it appears Amy beat us to it. Go check out her blog at amybogard.com, A-M-Y-B-O-G-A-R-D.com, and take a sneak peek at her Meddling with Nature post. Thanks for all the kind words, Amy. Okay, back to it. And we're back! <laughs> Thank you for that. It was like Nickelodeon. WCHD, the chode. <laughs> well, um, Mike, Mike, take us home. What are we talking about? Here? All right, so I just want to start off with a question mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Round table question or just a question for Dan? I'm going to throw it out and you guys can fight over it. We're all just going to start talking at the same all time. Right, it's going right. to be epic. Whip it out there. Yeah. So, okay. I think a lot of people... Think about vegetarians as being more, they're more moral than, or that is kind of the reasoning behind vegetarianism. It's like, it's just a better way to sustain the world. Oh, you said that dirty word, sustain. It's yeah, just better. You say moral. <laughs> no, sustain. It's just I hate better. Sustain. I hate right? moral. <laughs> I hate morals in general. I just want to have I a philosophical <laughs> stance against morals. <laughs> Let I hate the word better. Can we let him finish Best the question? <laughs> he hasn't even finished the question and we're still all talking. You may go. Is it? I hate the word is. <laughs> isn't it? I hate the word is. Ain't it? <laughs> Ain't she? Is a vegetarian who does not grow any of their own crops... More moral than a meat eater who only hunts their own meat. Morals are relative. Morals are highly relative because that would depend on why you do it. Like if I was a vegetarian who did not grow his his own crops because he enjoys the toils of farmers, that's not highly ethical. Or, or if I'm a hunter, <laughs> I'm a hunter who only eats meat because it cries when I shoot it. Then, then that's, yeah. you're, you're getting a little ethical about that. That's right, my sir. Right. Break your backs on this week. Your <laughs> 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 maids <laughs> sweat upon the brow. Even better, you just don't eat it. You just throw it in a heap. I, I yeah. only eat unfair trade tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will pee on anything organic. Yes. <laughs> I love blood diamonds. <laughs> We're talking about the, the, the morals of this. I, I will say that things quickly grow into... Um, the concepts of is it morally correct if I don't make my own shoes or if I um, am not binding my own books or if I am not, you know, like... Bind like, them, try writing them. Oh, way to go fucking interrupting cow. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, it, 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 it really... The question, the question is, is noble, but it's also supposing that we are all wild men. And we're not. We we live in societies. It, it is not really about that question um, because we do all work as a society. That's the part of being in a society, being in a city, being in any kind of polis. Uh, Nate? Um, morals are relative, and I would say the two are talking past one another. What do you mean by that? Um, they're, they're not dealing with the same set of basic assumptions. Um... They're not talking about the same thing. I agree with Nate mm -hmm. and also Jeremy. I think that, um, you know, when you're talking about is it more moral for a vegetarian, you're saying a more moral for a vegetarian who grows their own vegetables? Yes. And a, or a meat eater who 
kills their own meat. No, a vegetarian who refuses. refuses they, they, no, no, not refuses. A vegetarian who's like, I don't want to hurt animals, but I also, I'm not going to grow my, I'm going to go to the grocery store and, and buy my. But, and this is the thing is that, is this vegetarian not growing? There's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, like, I, I feel like it's, it's kind of bullshit for people to say, I'm willing to eat chicken nuggets that are shaped like stars. And not actually be able to kill a chicken, mm-hmm. you know, that bothers me to yes. think that, like, I like I feel like if I was living on a farm and somebody said, hey, you got to go out there and kill a chicken if you want to have dinner tonight, I would have to face that. And I feel like I could do it. I don't know that I could, but I feel like I could. And I, I, I think that, that that's that's a big dilemma of meat eaters is could you go out and kill your kill your food Mm -hmm. and and i think that with vegetarians i and this is the thing is that i don't like getting in the garden i don't care (laughs) i'm gonna be real honest like i like the idea of it i like the idea of paying somebody to garden for me Mm -hmm. it makes me feel better i would be more willing to kill a chicken than to plant a tomato that is fucking awesome. No, and no, that's, I'm gonna that's be real just honest. my point. Like, I just that... don't like being in the dirt, and I don't like it, and and I don't think that that makes me less moral. Wow. I think that that I think that you know it sucks that I don't like it, <laughs> but I also mm-hmm. just don't like it. Well, I think that's kind of my point. Is that not a noble way to look at meat eaters who are no. willing to hunt their own food? Yeah, noble savage. Rather than. <laughs> I would then a then a vegetarian who's like I don't eat meat because that's wrong hurting killing an animal but also I'm not going to grow my own crops like I would go and forage for my own vegetables easily I would not I do not like the idea of planting my own vegetables and growing them I don't like gardening I don't at and all. you would hunt but, your own but I would go out and forage my... for vegetables I would go well, out and I would kill something in a world where foraging for vegetables happens you would not be you <laughs> I would. I mean, but I could. I can forage here. Oh, we, 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 we will. How Jeremy's about we take a month? Take, how about we take a month of, of no grocery shopping? It will have to be uh, a summer gonna, month. That's <laughs> it. Oh, I have some oh. shit going on during I'm going to stockpile a bunch of canned goods. No, yeah. but I mean, this no, is an experiment I did. I mean, I, this, up. this, no, I, I seriously did that. That was during the Art Academy. I, I went for, um, a good eight months just living off of what I could find in Cincinnati, and it was pretty were enlightening. You, were you doing dumpster in there? No, oh, okay. Spring Grove. Okay. Yeah. I, best, I heard about this thing Grove. called the 100 mile diet. Uh huh. Oh, you have to only eat things that are within 100 miles that come from within 100 miles. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah that's maybe less reasonable. Well, it's, a, it's a game. It's a game. It's a game, yeah. yeah. Uh, may, may I take a moment to address the Oh, I think we're just going to skip you. Oh, actually. that's great. That's great. I appreciate it. Yes, Dan. Please. Um, okay, so I agree with Nate that there's a lot of ethical <laughs> crosstalk here. Um, as a vegetarian, I prefer people who hunt their own meat. Yeah. If you're going to eat meat, it's good that you have some sort of understanding with how... You're getting that. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, not hunting all of your meat, certainly. That's ridiculous. But equally ridiculous is the concept that everyone who's going to eat only vegetables should have to grow them themselves, that that's an ethical requirement. All of our original nation states and early civilizations only came about once we had... Slaves. Sla- yeah, slaves. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, yes. I mean, that's pretty much the case. Or at least a lower caste of people that were providing enough food to create positions for people that didn't have to go into the farm every day and Thinkers. therefore could, you know, dick around with abacai and whatever have you, you know, figure out, figure society. out. Society. It's society. not even society. a slave thing. Yeah, it's, it's not even a slave thing, although it was often, well, it's to be honest. Well, it's, it's a society thing. I don't even think we need well, to say class or slaves no, or anything. It's, Socrates it's, wasn't out, like, hoe in the fields. Well. Right, and, 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 then, and those, and those, in the Roman Empire, most of the people that were doing the farm work were, if not slaves, slavish. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think that that in in our context, especially with the eighteen hundreds, that means something very different that we don't want to get into right okay. now. Okay, yeah. So a non racial class system. That was still sometimes racial. I just racial. want to say society. But yes, I at any rate, it doesn't like really going from 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 nomadic to agrarian. That's simply what we're talking about. Right. Whether we're talking about slaves or not. That's 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 well, apart from the well, issue. Well, we're talking about developing economies and differentiating. Yeah, and I think that, that if we start really obsessing over over the slave part of it, I wasn't. I was glossing over it. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
Which is so and much it better. turned into an obsession. So you, you, made it, you were. I obsessed did with not. It. I said that. You it's said like, we shouldn't say the word slave. No, I said that we shouldn't really <laughs> obsess over the word slave. Well, we already have now. So I'm going to edit this the way I please. <laughs> anyway, so back to the slave thing. Um, so yeah, the, the the early nation states, the early civilizations, all came about when we started not having everyone have to hunt or gather, but mm-hmm. rather we had people that could, you know, actually grow. Crops that were in such bounty that it was more than enough for just them, and we could stockpile and get granaries, and we could start actually building up a civilization. And that's where all of civilization, that's where you know written word comes from. Everything comes from figuring out a way for somebody to grow food for you. Well, yeah, especially when you're talking about the written word. I mean, when we're looking at at ancient hieroglyphic, it's it's uh, yeah, some of the first early parts of that was. Tallying grain counts. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> yes. tallying grain counts, yeah. That's where we get our maths. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, again, I don't think that the two are necessarily related. However, I consider the fact that I am able to live as a vegetarian to be a luxury mm-hmm. that is provided to me by the society that I live in. Yeah. So. Next question, Mike. Next question. Succinctly. <laughs> Next succinct question, Mike. That's a college word. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you're gonna have to. I never graduated college. What's that? Oh my god! Quickly, All right, so. like what we're not doing right now. Mm, okay. No, oh, this is laconic. This is all right. This is all right. Don't say that word. Yeah, that's one too. Yeah, it I don't really even know is. what that means. Lactose. For, to be to be like milk. Are you laconic? Yeah, ever right? since 300, everybody uses that damn word. Laconic? Mm-hmm. Oh, I never saw that movie. Lick a lot of... He has lots of naked dudes in it, though, so I probably should... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's all Yeah. Mike, next, please. Next. Is it Mike. on Netflix? Um, no, but it is. Yeah. It's on Hulu. Be oh. terse. Terse. You can masturbate in my living room, though. I'm so busy. You can if nobody's around. Huh? I don't have time for it. Three, two, one. I just clapped. It scared me. I don't know if he knows we're talking to him. Be, be like milk, my friend. Go! <laughs> go! Go! No, you've got... You've got look at... you got like a thousand questions. What is all that? That was the last question. That you want me to read it for you? All right, give me the, give me your notebook. No, I'm telling you, it's already... We've gone through it all. That was the whole thing? Well, some of these are notes that I've already brought up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like... Uh, yeah. That's, so, so we're done? Else? So we're done? Well, no, there no, you no, have No, 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 no. This has been very disappointing. Because I have, I mean, I've got, I don't think it yeah, has. I don't think, I, I, Nate thinks that this entire recording has been bullshit. And I think that it actually has been okay. So, Nate, this is your turn. I think it would be great to hear Nate's final thoughts. Yeah, what are your final thoughts as to why we've been wasting our time? That's a tough job. This is a hell well, of a subject. Well, be succinct. I would be laconic. Thank well, it's, it's 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 a big subject, but it's also not one that up. we're going to tackle in one hour. Like I didn't get to talk about anything I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Plato liked the um, Lacunians. No, not so much. They had the word war. <laughs> the Platonics. Oh, no, like, stop with like, the nerd bullshit. The just go with like, it. I don't yeah, understand anything you're saying. It's like a different language. Yeah, it is a different language. It's, it's great. Sense. He was lactonian the, intolerant. Right. <laughs> the Athenians and the Spartans were at war. Athens lost. They were kind of disappointed about it. Where does the Trojan horse come into this? No. Like 800 years before. Yeah, it doesn't. And, like, in, in mythic history. Okay. Yeah. And so how does this relate? This is when they were all, like, like you know, wanking against each other. I heard this than... really interesting idea oh, so last night in the lecture that Today we the reason they... Wow. We did. <laughs> there was lube in that fucking gravy, wasn't there? I can How it. dare you bring that up? Why didn't you put some? Why didn't you put some lube in the lotus? Can't, can't you just let me? Why are you talking it. about the Greeks? Can't I All just I can forget? think of anytime somebody brings up the word Greek, you think of I think of sex. Gravy. I think of gay sex. Whenever I think of the Grecians. All I think about. Well, I mean, <laughs> all I think about. I've been. All I hear. Such a small. I just bird. hear. <laughs> Tell me, Jerry, did they take it up the ass? I <laughs> up the Athens. I I enjoyed Athens. I did. I'm and sure you there did. There are a lot of things sense. going on in Athens, and a lot of ways in which young American boys can be taken advantage of. 
Yeah. All right, road trip. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we're not. None of us are young anymore. I I was (laughs) seventeen. Yeah. Well, my capacity as young. Yeah, maybe. Bullshit. Put me on a train. <laughs> train I actually first. don't know what we're talking about. I miss. I hope the train is to somewhere good because I, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. It'll, it's it'll, have fun. it'll have fun. <laughs> it'll have fun. Did all you work, like that gravy tonight? It'll all work out. In the end. <laughs> <laughs> that gravy does other things. Brilliant. Please just tell me there'll be yeah. enough cornstarch to go around. I want to talk about um, meat as a utility. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. You never got you're, to. No, because I decided, just hearing where we were going, that this is going to be another conversation. Like that's another thing. That this is, is this is this is this is building up to it. I want to talk about me as a utility. Well, so briefly you know, describe what that means. No. Yeah, I don't. Jesus no, no, just so I can have an what introduction. Did I what do you mean? Say? What do you mean by this? Is the angry half of the podcast that we're never going to listen to again? Mm-hmm. Let's just enjoy it. What do you mean by meat as utility? I'm curious as yeah, to what that means. So well, it's the same, it, it's exactly what I um, uh, forwarded to you. That blog post. That's meat as utility. Turkeys. Well, the, not just turkeys, but but the entire thing that's about it, like like the the packaging, the right, like all of it has gone under uh, a system of utility. Yeah. We flush our toilets. We don't know where it goes. Yeah. We expect well, our meat to come under cellophane. Podcast where Let's, we're talking about. We are in that podcast. Well, no, because we, we don't have the stamina for going. it. We know that. We know we don't we have the stamina do for it, too. All right, well, let's We'll let's, get, like, uh, ten minutes into this, and me and Mike are just going to, like, zonk out. Well, yeah, no. just no. like I did on the first one. Well, you need to pace oh, yourself. Yeah, you're but zonking. you've got a defense tomorrow. And also, you said it already. Like that, we zonk out on some of them. Yeah. You zonk out on some of them. And I don't. And zonk out. I'm not on allowed you. to zonk out on like, anything. You know. Because you like to talk. Oh, I like. To no, talk. it's you because I, I have to, to be about. a fucking father. Oh come on, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Should we start Daddy's calling love? you Daddy? Yeah, you should. I am, no, you should call me <laughs> Patrifamilius. Papa? <laughs> I'm gonna call you Papa JJ. Patrifamilius. Nope. Patri- 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 oh my gosh, Patri- I'm gonna Patri- get drunk Patri- and I'm gonna Patri- fuck that up and I'm gonna be like... Papa Johnson! Like the pizza, but with the sun at the end. I only mean anything <laughs> when it comes to naturalism. Just remember that. <laughs> nope. I like like, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna like call you my familiar. Yeah, my familiar is a human. I do not need to kiss your babies. <laughs> Don't you mean a slave? No, it's my... I do not need to bless your crops. human familiar. But will you? I will. I will. Of course I will. Yeah. You'll be like, hey, spouse. Poppy family. <laughs> Poppy. You bless my meat curtains. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to talk about meat as a utility. What does that mean? I want to hear you tell me what that means. That it becomes something um, of a commodity. Um the water that comes out of the faucet is all the same. It's always the same. Um, and the water out of one faucet is basically the same as the water out of any other faucet. It is a utility. Uh, same with a sewer. It goes in the same way. Um, electricity is all the same. Mm-hmm. Soon internet access will be. Telephone. Well, it is. Yeah. It is. Well, no, no, it's, but it's, it's actually about soon. to be regulated as a utility. Yeah, well, it doesn't like, From a legalistic standpoint. Is. Yeah. I mean, but... But that's that's always been my my case with the food industry um, that that it is a utility. Well, this was mine, yeah, damn well, it! Sh- but you go ahead. What did you learn from me? <laughs> yes. Um, Makes slurping noises. And so, meat as a utility is that um, uh, commodification of meat, uh, wherein you pay a set price and you get a, a predetermined thing. A chicken in every pot. It's not. It's not. Uh, well, I mean, you, you could say that you about purchase a life that is um, interchangeable and clean, sterile. It is. It is unfamiliar. Yes. Yeah. So a commodity. So so you're calling it a utility in in as such that. Well, you, what's the fungible? Is the word I want. A fungible no, commodity. No. Yeah. Okay. What does a fungible mean? Uh, interchangeable. One barrel of oil is the same as another barrel of oil. So you're saying that it's something that we don't think about. The lights on, 
I don't think about the light being on until until there's no light. I'm not concerned no, which power company provided. I can go to your house and turn a light on, and it's the same as being at my house and turning a light on. They're well, both lights. I can and, and, and I can buy beef from Kroger, and it's the same as buying beef from my utility. Yeah. Just beef. Utility. Just, it's all beef. Yeah. Yeah. Utility is now up. becoming a right as well. Like like. Oh my God, my life, Duke Energy. What do I pay you for? You know that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I didn't it's have like, lights for one day because yeah, like, there was a. Where the fuck is store. my Chuck? Yeah. Um and and yeah. Yeah. And and I think that the, the, the food industry, especially with meat in particular, mm-hmm. um, has has gone in that direction. Did you hear oh, about? Damn. The- <laughs> That's like <all> <laughs> Maybe don't fucking rub your hands with a fork. Jesus. Um. So Bumblebee <laughs> recently. Oh yeah. Cooked to do okay, in dude. an oven. Who? Did you hear about to this? Do? Bumblebee. So the, apparently, this guy got into an oven at the Bumblebee like tuna factory. He got into the oven. And he was Sweet. cleaning the oven out. And they put like a fucking vat of tuna into this oven, <laughs> and they cooked the dude in the oven for two hours. <laughs> That's not oh, funny, Jeremy. No, it is he funny. Died. Not funny. Why is it not? That's really not funny. Some Why is man it not funny? He died. He died. I know that's yeah, awful. You have to wait. You have to wait for a while before it's funny. It's yeah. like comedy times. Too or soon. The tragedy times. Time. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be shamed at this. No, I don't think that's ever funny. I think that, that human tragedy is always funny. I think Man. that if you present it properly. Was cleaning an oven? Which can you? Are you have you cleaned an oven in your life? Yeah. It's awful. Mm-hmm. Cleaning ovens I think you is just awful. My oven after yeah, yeah, also cleaning, he moves around and cleaning goes, ovens so, like, is, 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 is so not fun. Good. Like, can you imagine cleaning an industrial oven? That's probably not any fun. And he was probably in there like, I hate my fucking life. This sucks. And then they were like, yep, just going to put a vat of fucking tuna in there with you. So now you got to smell tuna. And then we're going to shut the door. And it's going to get, like, to be 270 degrees Uh. in this oven. And he's like, oh, my God. Guys, let me out. Nobody lets him out. He's got to smell tuna. He's still cleaning the oven. I, know. Well, I think the it's joke horrible. is not. It's horrible. I think it's the horrible. joke is I think not. The joke was that, that that she just said that smelling the tuna is like really the hardest yeah. part. Of yeah, he just, he well, just made it sound trivial. As hell. Honestly, yeah. I feel like the joke no. is not standing in front of a giant oven with a window and laughing at that dude burning to death, but rather sitting here and you laughing at that industry you, like. That's ridiculous that that's what it's come to, that the utility of making tuna uh, is killing people who are cleaning ovens because that is, like, such jobs. an insignificant thing yeah. in the, well, in the whole process Well, I think, I think too, tuna. like, when we're looking at humor, when you experience something or you see something in, in, in person, it is a little bit more, it has a little bit more gravitas to it than if Ram. you are hearing it. No, no yeah, gravitas. It's the same gravitas. Um, stop it. Stop it. To stop derailing every fucking statement that could be made by irrelevancy. Okay. Or irrelevance. Either one of those is a horse. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> what I'm saying is like, no, like, like I, I, I you know, appreciate that. I was, I was struggling for something. <laughs> um, because. Obviously, if we see tragedy ourselves, it's uh, awful. It's always well, awful. People typically turn to comedy. Like, so the people that deal with the more morbid yeah. aspects of life typically have something anybody to be ever, able to say about Anybody ever, yeah, I mean, ever, anybody it's, here seen somebody on their deathbed for uh, leprosy? <laughs> well, I have. No. I have, because I've been in third world countries. It's awful. It's but terrible. yeah, it, it does sound terrible, and it is terrible. But at the same time, there's a lot of comedic value around for people who don't know anything about it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Once you've seen it, once you've seen it, it's still it's well, a human. It's still kind of funny. Does on your fingers and toes. Yeah, it marks you, but at the same time, like uh, you can't take everything in the world seriously. Otherwise, we Neither are. Can we laugh at it. Yeah, you, you have, have to. You have to, you have and to that's why I said. Otherwise, right, we'll I, all I'm be. Not, I'm not buying it. All right, all right. Well, so, what was the? What you were just wanted something. You just wanted to bring it up. I just wanted to bring it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to let you guys know that it would really suck to die in a tuna oven. It would. Because it would smell. It could, well, not only because it would smell, but also because you were cleaning a tuna oven. Like, like I don't like cleaning ovens, is what I'm saying, and I think that, like, anyone who's actually cleaned an oven should know that cleaning ovens kind of sucks. 
And, like, to be so deep in an oven that somebody doesn't notice you're in there? Whoa. Can you imagine being, like, so deep in an oven that somebody was like, I'm just going to shove a fucking vat of tuna in here and not notice you? I can imagine. In that oven? And, like, you're just like, whoa, whoa, stop, stop! And then they shut the door anyway and then turn the oven on? That's why I always How think terrible there's, is there's that? extenuating cir- circumstances to all that. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you cannot, you can try to, but you cannot create a foolproof system. Well, let's find some sort of outro here. Okay. It maybe is a little bit more positive than... For all of our listeners out there, don't smell tuna. If you're going to smell tuna, don't... No, it in an oven. they're not going to hear any of that story. Yeah, I'd prefer that story to not be included. Yeah, it's not going to be included. Because apparently it came off as a major fucking B word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it you was just like I'm, fuck tuna. Yeah, well, you just, like, like a major bumblebee. <laughs> Bumblebees are cool. Not when they're murdering people in ovens. So, who's got an outro? In a world where somebody's decided to brush their teeth, <laughs> it'll close. The mouth noises. So many mouth noises. Do you have? Tell you, your other you joke. Jar? Tell your other joke. <laughs> I don't the, think the one you already told us. For now, no, I should. The one about the well, vegans. maybe I could put it in the beginning. Come on. There's an. <laughs> the one about the Do vegans, it. that's Do good. It. That's good. What's it? The one about the vegans. Yeah, that's that's what told us. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's like, not even funny. Well, just say it anyway. I don't want to. <laughs> Something you can say. So, how do you... How can you tell if if there's a vegetarian at your party? No vegan. You guys say vegan. Gotta no, be well, vegan. It's my joke! No, it's <laughs> not your joke! How, how can you tell if there's a vegetarian at your party? Uh, I don't know. It'll be the one avoiding the hot dogs and the vegans. <laughs> oh. Well, how do, you, how do you tell a vegan at your party? I don't know. Mike? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. They'll probably tell you. Ah, ooh. Ooh. This has been I don't know. This This has been I don't know with nature. This has been the Meddling with Nature podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we hope to see you next week. Say you love you. I love you. You ooh. love, I love you. me. She loves I her. love you. You love me. No, 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 copyright, nope, copyright. Nope, nope, nope. All right, thank you very much. Ba-dooms. I got one more. Okay. Okay. That's directly, it's right at you vegetarians. Well, I'm not a vegetarian. Why I'm just gonna looking at them. I'm looking off into the distance at the hordes of vegetarians out oh, there. Oh, I eat so much meat. I don't, I don't actually feel this way, but I, I saw this on a, I won't yes, go for on it. a body lifting forum. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a body, a body building forum. Whatever. Oh, no, it's yeah. body lifting. It's a, it's a, it's a coroner. Some vegetarian was making some point, and some body lifter came back, and all he replied with is, "Hey man, my food shits on your food," and that was all he had to say. And I thought, that oh was my nice. god. The the meat eater said that. Yeah. The yeah. The, my food shits on your food. Yeah. But when your food shits on my food, it makes my food taste better. My my food sh- is shitting on your food. That statement. That's cool. Actually, we, we actually put your food shit onto. It's actually intentional. I know this like, is my dog. It's, it's so me. meta. Back and forth forever. Back and forth forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there you have it. Be sure to tune in next week when we will discuss something completely different, yet deceptively relevant. Please keep us in mind for all your naturalist and taxidermy needs at meddlingwithnature.com. But for now, we must be shoveling off. Mm-hmm.